The EDUCAS WJC specification requires students to consider John Finnis's development of natural law. The first film considered Finnis's development of the basic human good. This second film will work through the development of Finnis's distinction between the theoretical and practical reason, his nine requirements of practical reason, the common good and the need for authority as described by the specification. Finnis makes an important distinction between practical reason and theoretical reason. He declares that to be reasonable, and by this he means well-informed, intelligent and consistent, is self-evidently good. Theoretical reason takes care of questions that concern matters of fact. This knowledge is concerned with the workings of the world and cannot establish the basic human good. In contrast, practical reasoning begins with self-evident knowledge of the goods and then is participated in by dealing with questions about how to apply the goods within the world. In this way, practical reason considers which commitments or projects to choose and how to carry them out. To tell whether a decision or action is practically reasonable, a person must have experience, intelligence and a desire for practical reason. Unlike other ethicists, such as utilitarians, Finnis rejects the idea that theoretical reasoning, or is statements about the world, can lead to practical reasoning, ought statements about how we should behave. This means that Finnis's natural law is not challenged by the naturalistic fallacy. Each of the nine requirements of practical reason concerns what a person must do, think and be in order to participate in this basic good. To fail to live up to any of these requirements is unreasonable. Practical reasonableness is both a basic value and concerns one's participation in all the other basic values. They demonstrate the natural law method of working out the moral natural law from the first principles of natural law. The first requirement of practical reason is to have a coherent plan of life. It is unreasonable to drift through life following whims or immediate desires. A person needs a plan in life, yet it is equally unreasonable to be so focused on one goal that leads to a rigid obedience in rules. There is no one way to live a good life, and the goods are not goals. We participate in them, so life should be viewed as a coherent whole, where projects we take part in are part of a life plan that enables us to participate in goods. Secondly, we must have no arbitrary preferences amongst values. All seven basic goods are objectively and equally good, so none of them should ever be ignored or over-exaggerated. Circumstances sometimes dictate that we must focus on one good. So, for example, if I am drowning, then life is what I focus on rather than play. Yet this is subjective to my situation. In fact, play and life are equally, objectively and intrinsically good. So our life plans should then make reasonable allowance for participation in all the values.